International brings you the word of God that is able to unveil the power that lies within you. Listen expectantly as Apostle Bongret Clement brings the voice of Dogza with power. Let the unction of the Lord carry you that you will bear fruits and that your fruit will abide. I say you will yield fruits in this season. That is a betting of another generation. I will pronounce you as pastors of thousands of congregations that anywhere you stand upon, the ground shall break up. You shall be a major voice in the land, in the town of Inugu. There shall be heart ablaze. Eternal rock of ages, I bring your word with speed and accuracy tonight. Ask Lord and the angel of the anointing Execute your word in the life of people, in their career, in their ministry, in their endeavor. Let the word, what the word talk about, best forth, grace and ability. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus tonight. Celebrate Jesus. Wow. Celebrate Jesus. I feel this life in the studio tonight. God bless you for that. You can have your wonderful seat. Praise God. We've been on the series, the gospel, and we're looking at the various channel, and we've dwelt so much on the gospel of life. And the previous messages we had was like a kind of introduction, and we're still getting deeper tonight. The good news about our salvation, the good news about the things of the kingdom, is all about life. So Jesus brought life. So the gospel is centered on life. In Levitic, Leviticus 17, 11, the Bible says, the life of every animal is in the blood. But in the beginning of the beginning, God instituted a life frame from a covenant that involved a blood. For instance, the Bible says the Lamb of God who was slain from the foundation of the world. It means before the heaven and earth was created, Jesus already had been slain. So the coming of the Lord Jesus and going to the cross is acting out what has been done in the eternal past. There are three faces of a man's existence. Number one, you were in God before the foundation of the world. When you read Psalm 90, the Bible says, can I have Psalm 90? Number two, you existed in your mother's womb. And number three, the earth realm where you are now. I say number one, you existed even before you appear in your, your mother's womb. Can we carry we together? Let's prove number, number one point. We're talking about the gospel of life. And I want to show you that source of this life. That this life is not a recent thing. So when you are preaching the good news of salvation, it is centered about a particular life of a personality that was, that was released for your sake and for others. So when you are extending or preaching to others, you are transferring life. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Right now as I'm preaching, whatever you are listening to me, I'm, 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 I'm releasing, I'm activating the life in you, and I'm supplying lives into you the more. Why do I know this? Because there are two components that is attached. The word of God is broken down into two realms, according to John 6, 63. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So there is a spirit dimension of the word and there is a life dimension of the word. So anytime you are preaching the word or you are hearing the word or you are studying the word or the word is encountering you or you are encountering the word, that means the atmosphere, what I call the word atmosphere, when you are under the word atmosphere, the word atmosphere, don't bother checking dictionary. You can pick it right away. Wherever you are hearing me from. You are daring life friend. You are activating what is in you. You are, you, are, you are calling on to the deep in you. The deep in the world is calling on to the deep in you. You, you are on a journey of self-synchronization. I call it personal alignment. When you get to this realm, you can't be frustrated. When you get to this realm, you don't need a man to be happy. 
when you get to this atmosphere, you can stay. You pull out a verse from within you. And then you begin to meditate, to ponder on the verse. Beating up the verse. Doing something with it within. You'll be so busy with the Holy Ghost right there. Can I hear you say, man? Where is the time for depression? Where is the time for, for, for thinking you are rejected? I call it self-activation. That's what I tell people. Christianity cannot do anything for you. Christianity is not meant to do anything for you. You can do something with your Christianity. That's the program. God instituted the kingdom. Kingdom cannot do anything. It is you that can utilize. You appropriate. You apply the kingdom to your day-to-day activity. Oh, hallelujah. At this level, you become a kingdom manifesto. If there's any grammar like that. So I said there are three realms of your existence. You existed in God before you existed in your mother's womb. And then before you are existing in the earth realm right now. So there are three dimensions to this. So I said Psalm 91. Oh, Psalm 90 rather verse 1. He said, Lord, that has been our dwelling place in all generations. I mean, before we came, we're in Him as a partner. We're in Him as a co-heir. Mehu, mehu, liata. We're in Him as a joint heir. We're in partnership with God. He brought us to a place of fellowship. He built relationship into being. Tell your neighbor, I can't do without the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, whatever you are hearing me from, that's why I only tell people, there is a realm beyond Christianity. There is a realm beyond being a church member. It's beyond denominational issue. You need to come to a place where your spirit will know that it is not just, you know, you, you at this level, you think beyond men. You go beyond the activity of men. You know you were in God. Can we read this together? So David knows this. He said, Lord, that has been our dwelling place. In all generations. Verse 2. Can we read louder? Oh, glory to God. See, I have this life in me right now. Tell your neighbor, the life is at work in me. Say, it is the gospel of life. And I'm a custodian of this life. I'm a carrier of this life. And I'm glad I'm a carrier. Hallelujah. It is the gospel of life. The gospel brought us to a life frame. He said, Before the mountains were brought forth, Kibaha, ever thou hast formed the earth and the world. Oh, Jesus. Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And verse 1 said, We're in him. We're already dwelling there. Second Timothy chapter 1. I'm tracing us the, 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 the source of this life Where we were How we are We are not just an entity that was born in 1976 1977 1980 whatever Whatever is your birthday Don't over celebrate that Celebrate your existence even before you appear in your mother's womb That is the realm of purpose So you can get anywhere you are hearing me from don't get confused. I, I, I'm like, no one is listening to me. You are confused about your purpose and your destiny. Why are you asking your pastor, your prophet? Why are you asking your friends about your purpose? Can't you go to your manufacturer? Let them let those pastors confirm who you what you have already had to you. Prophecy should not be an information, let it be a confirmation. Why not go to back to your, your manufacturer? He know why you came in here. I was born to be a prophet to my generation. I was born to carry a message of unveiling the power of Christ. This is the purpose. I couldn't have done anything better. Do I develop my, my, my ambition to be a medical person? I did it to the peak. But the fulfillment was not there until I clicked this atmosphere. So when I came out of the anointosphere, in the territory, in the faculty of Wardosphere, from Wardosphere, I was able to locate the anointosphere. I began to relate with the mandate and the purpose of God in my life. And life became sweeter. Can I hear you say, man? Glory to God. 
2 Timothy 1 9, the second verse to back what I'm saying. He said, Who had saved us? Oh, glory to God. And called us, keeper, with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us where? In Christ Jesus, before the world began. So, being in Christ is not a recent thing. In 2 Corinthians 5 17, that is just a kind of a recreation. Have been in Christ even before the foundation of the world. So David in Psalm 90 verse 1 say he has been our dwelling place. And then Paul in 2 Timothy in the New Testament is also referring to the same verse. Package it in a higher realm and in its simplicity to make it open for us to enjoy the liberty in Christ. Oh thank you Lord Jesus. Number two. You existed in your mother's womb. No, this, 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 what I'm saying now is not a deviation. This is supposed to be a series. What I'm sharing with I'm just hearing it for the first time. So I will need this tape when they are done. So that I can cook something better. That is the way God called me. That's why I say you must. The first thing you do in a commission is to understand how God operates with your man of God. And it will be easier for you to carry our DNA. What I'm saying now, I'm just hearing it. I'm hearing it live. Jeremiah chapter 1. Kabo Husha. Let's trace the second point. You, ex- you existed in your mother's womb. Yes, you existed in God. Yes, and then you appeared in your mother's womb. Yes, That's the second phase. Yes, Can we read together verse 5? Can you put your hands together for the technical They are impressing me tonight I, I, I love this verse Can we go on Want to go louder Before I formed thee Before I formed thee He said you were in me So he brought him into the mother's womb for formation Now can you hear the language of God But in the earth realm In the natural A man must have slept with Jeremiah's mother Oh my God I'm talking to somebody here to them, they were on the earth realm, fulfilling responsibility of giving in in marriage. Jeremiah's parents were excited that they want to have children to meet up with the family demand. Maybe there's no male child, or they're over male child, or they want to compete with Uncle A, who have three male child. They wanted Jeremiah to come as the fifth male so that they can beat them down. They were in their earthly competition. But in the realm of the spirit, the calendar God was running, oh Kabahata. It's entirely different from what these men were doing in the earth realm. It will surprise you that most of the things you are pursuing on earth, God is not aware. He's, 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 he's only aware of his purpose for you and for your generation. So he said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Prakahosa. And before that coming forth out of the womb, he said, for that period of incubation, he said, while you were there, before you come out, he said, I sanctify thee. Hey, 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 hey. What a grace. He sanctified him. And ordained him a prophet. So he had an ordination from the womb. That's the second phase. And as I'm talking to you right now, you came into the earth realm to fulfill dominion mandate. That's another third phase. You are on the earth realm right now. That's the third phase. So where you are, and now you are existing in various spheres of life, doing one or two things. Can you see three dimensions? I was in God. He was aware. In my mother's womb, I need the earth realm. Maybe in Numa domain where you find yourself part time. Am I talking to somebody? I'm talking about the gospel of life. I know some of you are curious so to see how this can go. It is a good news about the life. And this life is not a recent thing. It is a life. This life is birthed out of covenant. It is the very life of God himself. So it is the good news. The gospel is centered on a life. It is focused on a life. And that life is the life of God. 
But tonight, I, I, I will do everything possible within the time limit to show you what we can do with this life. You can't support this life. You can't add to this life. You can't protect this life yourself. You can only help to spread it. You can only help to use it to sustain things. We are going to say a lot tonight. Say I'm a life giver. Say I'm a distributor of eternal zoe. Yeah, are you zoe? We are distributors. We are marketers of this product. It was put in our custody, not angels. The Bible said that's why the glory of gospel was not put in the custody of angels. It was put in the custody of, of us, the new creation. You are the lion and the lamb, the word of the Father. Forever to be bred. I say, Oh, you are the lion and the lamb. John chapter 10 verse 10 Don't mind me I, I just took some Drinks in the realm of the spirit So that I can calm that atmosphere So that I can talk within the gospel as life Oh thank you Jesus Oh ha 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 Hmm oh, oh, oh. Sit down man Who's kill a bone the he said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. So the Lord is showing us that Jesus said, that there are three four dimensions to the ministry of Satan. He came in three dimensions. Look up at me. In every generation and in every situation, Satan is always first to talk. Though it's not a formula, but most of the time, he's always the first to start boasting and talking. It was Goliath that but first of all started talking anyhow. Insulting and boasting, but he didn't win the battle. Oh my god, I didn't hear what I said. So I'm saying in your life tonight, whatever body, whatever circumstances the devil have generated, don't think he has won. Jesus has won for you. I say you are coming out of that circumstances. I prophesy you are coming out of that circumstances. That's why in Psalm 30, verse 5, the Bible said, Though sorrow may last for a night, but joy cometh in the, the man. So when Jesus was introducing his purpose He said again This is the only place He made himself knowing In terms of his purpose of coming He said but I came That I might give life Because he wants you to have it So pay attention It's a popular verse but you may learn something new here So he said that they might have That means if they are going to have Then he gave so his mission is to give. Because he's coming from an atmosphere of giving. Because in John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave. So he's a product of giving. So he has something to give. And his product is life. And it's the life himself. Here is where Here is where Yes Lord Here is where In the name of Jesus Here is where Thank you choir <laughs> Oh 
Shakabaya. I am all year in my life, and I am born in. I am all year in my life, every day. I am born in everywhere forever. I know the one you know. You know, knowledge, when knowledge begins to increase, your revelation of song also will begin to change. We'll pray for it and the oil has come. Then how do you sing it? Okay, give me. It's given already. That's why I told you Christianity is for application. Christianity, a Christian life cannot do anything for you. It is you that can do something with what you know in Christianity. It's for application. If you think it's for knowledge alone, you heap up the knowledge and start using it to, to argue, like Jehovah Witness. And you are not one. A lot of you use your scriptures, some of your various fellowship. You use your knowledge to boast who is greater than each other. How, in what way can that stop terrorism of Boko Haram in Nigeria, for instance? In what way can that stop the activity or the attack of the enemy on the church and the growth of the church? So it is not for argument. It's not for keeping to proud of. It is for what? Application in reality. Can I hear you say man? You are learning anything, say yes, 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 yes. He said, I'm come, I am come that they might have. So, if they're going to have, there was a giving. So, God is always in the business of giving life. So, we are distributors of this life, we are marketers of this life. So, when you go out there to preach, you are preaching the gospel to people. What this is a series of the gospel because the church did not know what is the gospel. Yes, Many people preach, but the gospel is not yet preached. Not to talk of being heard. People talk about their church doctrine, they call it the gospel. People preach about heaven and hell, that's not the gospel. People talk about tithes, they talk about various things in the church, that's not the gospel. The gospel simply means good news. And I'm telling you in this city that it is the gospel that announces life. It is the gospel of life. Why life? Because death step in at a time. So Satan came in in the garden. And Jesus in John 10.10 10, was trying to bring out a picture and the purpose of his coming. So he said, I came that they might have. And if we are going to have, that means... Something happened dramatically. He gave. And if he gave, that means we receive. So if he's giving, and you too is giving back to him, something is wrong somewhere. Pride would need to come out out of it because he's giving and you are giving. But some religious terminology, people say they gave their life to Christ. So you gave your life to Christ. What did he do with your life? Nothing. Your life cannot make him God. He was God before. You. So he came down as God. He had this abundant life. So he gave to you. So if you can appreciate it and humble yourself that you receive what he has. Because oh, like who's right? Because the lesser is included in the greater. That means you can be humble till eternity. And he brought a life. And when you receive this life into you, that life has a potent. That life is viable. It is so programmed. A life that has ability to cause changes without your efforts. I am all year in my life, and I am born. I have oil inside me every day. Thank you, Jesus. I have oil in my life, and I am born. I am born. He has come to give us And I receive this life And I'm comfortable with this life 
But I can't keep it alone. As Jeremiah will say. He said, if I keep this walls, it will shut up, it will burn in my bones. Brothers and sisters, we have received something of eternal verities. We have received something of eternal substance. I have this life. It's superior to silver and gold. It's superior to mansion. It's superior to earthly materialistic things. That's why the Bible says, "Well, we look not at the things which are seen. You can look at your gold. You can look at your silver. You can look." He said, "These things are temporal." He said, "But there are things that have eternal value." Oh, hallelujah! The life of God, not the life of animal, the, not the life of man, the life of God. See that they might have. That's my emphasis. John 10, 10 that they might have. He wants you to have. Because if you don't have, you can't give. And now you've got in this life. Some don't even know they have. That's why I'm telling you that it is the gospel of the very life you already have. So when you meet a sinner out there, introduce him to this life. Don't waste your time with him. Arguing anything. Give him this life. When this life step into him, the life has the ability to do the work of the Holy Ghost. You are not assistant Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is capable himself to do his job. You can't assist God. Neither can you help him. You release this life into that personality. And when this life gets into that personality, great things will begin to happen. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. We are moving on. Oh, thank you Jesus. Oh, la posa compre his conomon de ingledido, pelicara dia na venish, pula ingozo zu bredish taha, bredish taha skelindo in kupara dia. For the air we breathe is the presence of God. For his spirit, when we breathe, even the, even the air you breathe out to people can bring healing, can bring transformation. I love a songwriter. He said, This is the air I breathe. Hey. Mm-hmm. Choir sings. This is the air I breathe. of life and I'm going to use the gospel of life but I'm going to take you to some beginnings that's why I began by telling you some dimension of three existence we existed in God we existed in the womb and we existed right away in the atrium exercising dominion on the devil and his cohort and his demon whatever you hear me through this tape that sickness is not bigger than you that financial problem that delay that frustration is not bigger than you I'm calling for the life of God in you to be activated right now. 
And if you have not received Jesus, you have an ample opportunity to do that. You got to do that right away. That life is bigger than circumstances. It's bigger than HIV. It's bigger than cancer. It's bigger than that tumor. It's bigger than that condition. I speak the life inside you. I put the life of God on you. Whatever you are hearing me on the sick bed in any situation, something is coming out of you right now, and something is entering you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. He said, But if the spirit of him, Romans 8:11. He said, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus. Now, he didn't say Christ. Liga has sobre niche. Because Jesus is in need of the spirit. Because Jesus is the humanity of God. In 1 Timothy 2.5, the Bible said the man Jesus. He has to become a man so that he can rescue man. He take a man to rescue man. It take a man to solve the problem of man. And if God will step in, you have to incarnate. You have to come as man. Why? Because in Genesis chapter 1, God has already given the earth realm to man. To dominate. He said you shall have dominion. So if he come as God to finish the redemption work, he have defiled his word. He can be my God if he does that. Because he has come contrary to his word. Because he said, The earth has he given to the sons of men. He said, You shall have dominion over this, over that. And man fell. And he need to come and rescue this man. So he has to become man. To partook of the affliction of man. Some of the things you are bringing to Jesus in prayer, he went through it for you. If you think you don't have money, Jesus does not have money at a time. He was asked to pay tax. But he did not confess like you. He did not behave like you. He started engaging them at their realm while he was communicating in his realm. He was asking them questions that he already know the answer because he's God himself. He was asking them what he already know the answer. He was engaging them while he's busy on the inside with his father. And when he was done with his meditation, he said, look around and say, all right, you guys, hold on. Emphasis is mine. And he said, Peter, get into the sea. You're going to have a catch. There is this first fish you're going to catch. Open the mouth. There is a corn in there, man. I mean, that corn was the highest denomination. No coins, just one. Tell your neighbor, one chance of opportunity is enough. One contract. One, one miracle. There is one miracle you can hit that is a key to other ones. A child of God is not meant to be struggling here and there. One contact, one encounter, Kapolaha, one rema, one revelation, one career of an oil, a generational kindred oil that you encounter as a man of God is enough. Jacobaha, Ledo Sprenish. I'm talking in Eastern Nigeria, wherever you are hearing from. Christian around this side of the world they have one, one syndrome of moving from one prayer house to the other and whatever you are hearing me you just need one encounter black Bartimaeus did not meet Jesus twice the woman with the issue of blood one encounter Jairus daughter one encounter You are the same today forever. Nobody is like you. You are the same yesterday, today forever. Nobody like you. Thank you.
Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Him. And the Him here is the Spirit of Him. There is a Spirit of Him that have to raise up Jesus. See that I'm going deeper here. Kali gongle dongle didango brongo causes her. How many of you are, you know, the, 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 the flights have taken off from the airport of Zion? And we have been running at 22,000 feet above the sea level. Now we are about to hit 32,000 feet. So, ladies and gentlemen, fasting more your seatbelt and relax. We are about to, to take some dimension. Now, let's look at we are talking about the gospel of life. This life that Jesus was revealing in John 10 10, it is not a life that, that was uttered in that place. That, that life was not uttered the day he was saying it. There is a life behind the life of the life of the beginning. So he said, but if the spirit of him, there is a him here that raised up Jesus from the dead. So he said, him, who, what is the spirit of him? That means God raised himself. The spirit of him then went and raised Jesus. So if, if I don't think if grammar people will, for, will permit me, I could say if the spirit of him that raised up him from the can I prophesy? What will make you great is already is born inside you. When you were born again, all the apps, all the software. Oh my God! I I, I, I don't know. What would make a man great is already in him. You came with it in Zion, factory prepared. And what would destroy a man is already in a man if you partner with the destroyer, the devil. But if you partner with the Holy Ghost, which is already in you, what to make you great is already embedded in you. Can I hear you say, man? So if the spirit of him that raised him. That's what Paul said. He said, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. The Lord gave me an album in those days, one of the track. My sufficiency is of God. My sufficiency is of God. My sufficient, my sufficiency is of God. That's what I can do. All peace in Him. That's what I can do. All peace through Christ. Hey, my salvation is of God. My salvation is of God. Oh yes. All this album free of charge, and I know that that's the essence of coming to see your church. You can see them. Hallelujah. He said, But in the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, he said, Look, he said, it's strange to say, Oh, Kalutumra He said, It's not another life that is in you. He said, It's this same life. He said, And if that spirit can quicken him, Mahuska, if he can raise him, and now you have the same Holy Ghost, Peru, he said, Nothing is impossible. Wherever you hear me, you can burst into tongues, you can burst into prayer now, you can speak to those situations. And I see God changing it. The same spirit that's speaking through me right now. The same spirit in you. If you are not born again, get him in tonight. The same spirit, not another spirit. The ministry of the devil is to make us look for solution outside. No, it's already within us. Jesus already died. Jesus had been crucified. Not just him alone. He said we were crucified with him. It is, it is, it is just a matter of identification. If you can identify with what he did, you have come into a realm where all things too will become possible to you. And there are two personalities in the earth realm. And there are all things are possible unto God and a new creation man. Jesus said with God, all things are possible. And he said all things are possible to them that believe. And you believe and you became born again. So you and God are personalities that are all things are possible unto. Then 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God is filling my heart tonight. I feel the anointing, the knowledge. God is equipping me. He's teaching me a lot of things tonight. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm getting blessed in the studio. The anointing is rising. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, I celebrate your presence. Oh, let's release this anointing to those hearing us at home. Wherever you are hearing me, I command that sickness, that atmosphere of evil. There's someone hearing me, you hardly sleep because of nightmare. This is the last day in the atrium. You are set free right now. I command every demonic oppression to cease. I speak to your life and destiny. Be risen up for a new beginning. Be risen up for harvest. Be risen up for takeover. It's the takeover season. Extend your tentacle. Let that business expand. Let that idea expand. Let that ministry begin to see a rising of the day. Kapola, ilamo, ilakeporos. Nothing shall be impossible again unto you, says the Spirit. If you can believe that there is a life of God in you, and the channel of this life is the gospel. When you preach it like I'm doing now, life is being activated in me. And you're here that something is also being activated in them. That means we are we are chargers to one another. We are chargers to one another. We are more than a power bank. Are you hearing me? When you when you minister the gospel as life, it is easier to pass it. If you preach it under the law, you are passing on a dead message, and death is easily distributed. So it takes a dead man to raise a dead man. Lakumaha. It takes a man full of life to bring life out of you. And the gospel is the gospel of this life. When you preach it, life is easily transferred. Both to the animate and inanimate things. Most of the time people have had us on that declaration of life, television that is packed up, electronics, phones, gadgets. They go home to plug them and you hear testimony that started working. Because life is coming to you. See, the devil came to steal and steal. That most of the phones, they will pick phones from here, they will still return it. Yours was returned. Yours was returned. You have countable number. See, that's where restoration is. It's a revelation. You know that as a carrier of this life, nothing can be stolen from you. You know the devil cannot cheat you. He cannot keep you in the cheating zone any longer. You, you meditate. You upgrade your life in line, in line with your reign. You listen to messages in your reign. You prepare yourself in your reign. You talk at your reign. You can't go to the lower life and be talking at that level any longer. You upgrade yourself. Am I talking to somebody? Thank you, Lord. He said, He that raised up Christ. Now, look up here. There are two grammar here. That if I go into this, the next six months, the Holy Ghost may not bring me out easily. There are two personalities. He mentioned Jesus. When he said, raise up Jesus from the dead. You all say, he that raised up Christ from the dead. Shall also. Now, before he mentioned also, he mentioned Christ. But when he mentioned Jesus here, he was talking about Jesus. But the moment you introduce Christ, he has introduced you. He did not introduce you when he mentioned Jesus. But the moment he mentioned Christ, he started referring the verse to you. Can we read it in understanding now? Let's go here. He said, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he's just showing the address. That if that Holy Ghost, if the Spirit is there, take note. They now say, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall. So they also then now include you. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh. So before he could include you, he has to mention Christ. Because we are at Christ's dimension. It's trying to say that if this help can be rendered to humanity of God, which is Jesus, he said, Much more now to the divinity of God, which is Christ's realm, where we are. Where are you? He said, If any man is in Christ, 
He said, Christ in you. So before he could bring you to the he said, also in your own mortal body. You will quicken your own mortal bodies. And by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So like one said, if the spirit of him. So he came to the last line, say, by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Roman 8:11. Now, how does this thing come? So I'm going to take deviate you to the Old Testament. I'm going to pick a verse in the Old and then pick one in the New. I want to trace the source of this life. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 11. Kila mandos kelia duhidela Shelia malo sale Kila malo Zachariah 9 11. Mehuze Lebosa. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Shakubra. Can we read together? He said, As for thee also, I am a Nulumando. As for you also, Menke. There is another also. Anyway, you see, also, also is bringing you on the scene. The also now is bringing you in equivalent. What a prophet! What Zechariah is seeing here, you know, it, I told people, you know, in, in, in biblical interpretation, a born prophet, what, how a prophet interprets scripture is different from how a teacher of the word. For this time, the books written by prophets is easier for most prophets to understand it in their reign prophetically. So, in scripture, one verse different, a thousand people the Holy Ghost can show them things from their own realms because every man has his realm. The battle in Christianity is that we want to want to explain men, want to compare men in their various realms, we will miss them. Every man is in his realm. I'm not called to do everything. And every man, some men may not be called to do what I do. So why are we comparing men with men? And Paul said, what's your business? Comparing me with Apollos. He said, we're doing the same work. He said, Hallelujah. He said, Apollos is an entity. I'm an entity. He said, it's God that brings the increase. He said, I planted, which is apostolic word. He said, if Apollo come, and he water and, and he water it. Then if the water is coming on the ground where there is a planting of a seed, turn into a tree, God they are the tree, then and then God now is to bring fruit, which is the increase. Oh, you see application of that series now. Oh Jesus. See the, the word of God is sweet. Tell your neighbor, the word of God is sweet. Hallelujah. He said, as for thee also. He said, by the blood of that covenant, I have sent forth the prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. What is he talking about here? The blood of the covenant. So it was Apostle Paul that made it clear in Hebrew. And those of you listening to me, maybe you may be a theologian and say, ah, is it Paul that wrote Hebrew? I thought it's this one. I don't know. I'm not a theologian. But the Spirit of God, every time I come to Hebrew, my eyes always open to Pauline revelation. So I don't need your argument and whatever you argue in school to know that it's Apostle Paul's writing. And when I see some writing, let's even forget who wrote. The Holy Ghost is giving me an interpretation here that matters to my destiny. Caleb Romney, Hebrew 13 20. Oh Jesus. Ah, ah, ah. Mm. Can we it together? Now the God of Irene, the God of Shalom, the God of peace that brought again Kobaha. What is it you have lost? My God will bring it again. He is the God of again. You can describe his character and understand him from his word. You can't understand God outside the word of God. You can't stand in men's spectacular or the experience of your general overseers to so stand knowing this God in detail. That may lure you into the kingdom, but that cannot give you kingdom revelation. So you need personal opening of eyes by the Holy Ghost. 
to make you see. So he said, brought again. I've always seen this God that is a God of again. The Bible tells you when the Lord turned again, the captivity of that means he, he's prone of doing that. Psalm 126. Then the Lord turned again. Then I came to the New Testament and I saw you must be born again. That means there is again. That means something. It's a God of again and again. You lost any realm, it's coming back again. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, I know God is encouraging me and somebody tonight. Personally, I'm getting blessed. He's the God of again. Not only God of peace. That brought again from the dead. Our Lord Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. You, you, you're beginning to see Roman 8 here now From the dead How did he bring him forth Now Roman 8 11 said If the spirit of him back up If the spirit of him if this. So how he, This place is not telling us the technology involved The apostolic movement involved Right from Zechariah Where we saw He said by the blood of covenant Prison Out of prisoners Out of the pit Where there's no That's the realm of death where there's no life, where there's no water. It is a prophetic language. The realm of the dead is like that. So he's prophetically talking about the resurrection of Jesus. So Zechariah was seeing it in his realm. The Hebrew is pointing it. He said, From the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, the great shepherd, not a minor shepherd, the great shepherd, the great God, the great shepherd of the sheep. Through what? The blood of the everlasting covenant. This is what we call eternal covenant. Everlasting covenant. This covenant is stronger than Abrahamic covenant. Davidic covenant. Mosaic covenant. And all the one the least you know from your Bible school. That's not what I'm talking about. All those covenants were shadow of this very one. This one was caught even before the world began. The Bible says the Lamb of God who was slain even before the foundation of the world. This is an eternal covenant. Jesus and his father went into this before he even began to say, let them be this and let them be that. This is where I operate. Brother, I find if you can pick this revelation, then a recent covenant that they say is in the family, in the natural, tormenting men, they may appear in the dream to you when you wake up. Don't forget this verse. If you soak yourself in this verse, for instance, for a month or two, you don't need prayer to come out of some things. You laugh over them. This covenant was there before Lucifer was created. Not to talk of when he became Satan himself. So a man with this revelation, which covenant can stand before you? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, ah. worship His holiness. Somebody worshiping tonight. What a God! What a God of covenant! Now the God of peace. The word peace here means shalom. Meaning the God of deliverance, the God of abundance, the God of prosperity, the God of healing. It's an all encompassing word. He used Shalom or Irene. He said, The God of peace, the author of this peace, Kipara. He said, He obtained this peace through what? Blood of the everlasting covenant. He said, He raised this shepherd, the great shepherd from the dead. And Hebrews, I mean, Romans said, If the spirit of him. Now, we saw a blood here. That means, according to Leviticus 17 11, he said, The life of every animal is in the blood. So, the life of this personality, God, is in the spirit. And if, if this life is in the spirit, and the Bible says in John 6, 63, the world that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And the Bible says in the beginning was the world, and the world was with God. And in verse 14, and the world become flesh. And I believe somebody has seen Jesus on the board. 
So you now know if the spirit of him that raised if the spirit of him that raised Jesus, you see the connectivity. What was that? The spirit was that when he sh- the everlasting covenant they shared the lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. The life of that lamb was set into motion for millions of years, waiting for how it will go. That means what happened in resurrection is not a recent thing. There was something that was rolling. A covenant was rolling in motion, waiting, passing all through ages. So when Abraham was cutting covenant, it is a glimpse, a shadow. There were, it's a shadow of the original that even took place before the end, heaven and the earth. The mosaic, all these things were shadow. And then the reality came, went to the cross, and his blood actually touches the earth realm. Mahushapa, reversed the order of things, Kepo, and put this thing on the road. And when Jesus was lying down there in the sepulchre, and the Bible said on the third day, there was a resurrection because there was a life hanging to bring him up. So when he said, that if the spirit of him, oh, I know, I know somebody, I know somebody elsewhere have caught this revelation where we are going. I just expanded Roman 8 11 for you. We're still talking about the gospel of life. I'm still trying to round up this because it's in series. But this series is so large. I told you earlier. It's the gospel of life. It is the gospel of life. So he came. He said he came to give. And if he's giving, that means they have. So in the next series, I'm going to tell, teach you on what to do with this life. Application of this life. If it's the gospel of life, what do you do with it? We're going to look at it. Can you stand up on your feet? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Oh, enjoy him tonight. Give him praise. Oh, yes. Wherever you are, give him praise. So the mission of Jesus is to give life. So when we go out there, let's talk to the people about this life. The act of talking about this life is what we call the gospel. So the gospel is not you going to crusade, going on evangelism and start preaching how God used your general overseer. It's not preaching your do- church doctrine. It's not talking about how your, your apostles or whatever is coverage you are under is raising the dead. It's all about extend, extending with your lips. Giving this good news. Announcing this thing. The good news about that life that he came to give. The emphasis is the one he gave. And I'm going to show you in the next series what we are to do with our life. Appreciate it one more time. And Father, we give a praise. And so, Lord, tonight I decree whatever the sound of my voice is being heard. I ask, Lord, that the anointing that has been generated in the atmosphere there already. My Lord and my call, I command every affliction to bow. I declare and declare whatever they are trusting you for is released right now. I ask, Lord, for supernatural turn around. Of blessings in their life and destiny. Thank you because things cannot be the same again. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Whenever you hear me from say, Lord Jesus, I decree tonight that you are my Lord and personal Savior. I confess right now that you were raised from the dead for my sake. And by this confession, I'm not a new person, I'm a new creation. Thank you for my past, it's gone. And I'm a new person right now. If you pray this prayer, I want to assure you, you are already born again. Get a Bible-believing church close to you. And get yourself soaked in the word of God. And if you have done that already, I want to pray with you. If you are sick, whatever it is you are looking for, tonight the Holy Ghost, the life of God is activated. On your behalf, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening. We believe you are blessed by this message. For more messages, prayers, and counseling, call 0706-290-4206 or 0815-892-8680. You can worship with us at Numa Domain Ministry International, Salem City, Nsuka, Enugu State, Nigeria. Thanks.